In this tutorial, we look at adding upgradable buildings to the City Builder Starter Kit. This demonstrates features such as custom building data, adding your own actions, and custom building behavior. First, let's take a look at the scripts in action. We'll build the usual sawmill from the demo, and we'll speed it up. Now when we click on the sawmill, we see there's a new option to upgrade the building. Before we do that, let's gather some resources. Notice that we gain 200 resources. Now, let's upgrade the building. It works like any other action and can be sped up. Now that the building is upgraded, if we gather resources, we get more resources. Note that at this stage, there's no visual representation of the upgrade. So how do we go about adding this new building behavior and the new actions? The first thing we need to do is to define the new building data. To do this, we create a new class called upgradable building data which extends building data. This class is serializable. By extending building data and making the class serializable, the data becomes automatically saved and loaded by the loading system. To this building data, we add a new variable called level, which represents the upgrade level. We make this a virtual public property so that we can then later extend in other classes. We now need to add some behavior. To do this, we create another class, this one called upgradable building and extending building. Although there's quite a bit of code in this class, it is almost all copied from the existing building class. The main thing that is different is the use of the new upgradable building data type. When we initialize a building, we set the data to this new type. We also default the level of the building to level one. So where does this code come from? Let's have a look at building. We can see the init method of building is virtually the same. However, we don't, of course, use our new building type data, nor do we assign a level. The acknowledge activity happens when an activity is completed and touched by the user. The implementation of this is again copied from the building data class. Sorry, the building class. We then add the new behavior that we desire. First, we add a check. We test that the building data is of the right type. If it isn't, we log a warning and stop. We then go on to change what happens when an activity finishes. When the reward type is resource, instead of rewarding just the amount, we multiply this reward amount by the building's current level. Similarly for gold, we take the reward amount and multiply it by the building's level. We also add some custom behavior to handle the upgrade activity. When we get the type of upgrade, we increase the level of the building by one. Alternative to this, we could have used the custom reward method. This is a message sent when an unknown custom type is found and is another way of changing reward behavior. What else do we need to do to support this? First, we need to create an activity. We create a new activity called upgrade. It's a custom reward type and the reward ID is upgrade. That matches the code that we just looked at. We also need to associate this with buildings. 
So we create a new building data file, copying the building data from the old file. In this case, we only have updated the sawmill object. We add a new activity called upgrade. By adding this activity, we'll automatically get a button in the UI to enable us to start the activity. Once we've done those changes, there are a few extra changes we need to do in the scene to make things work. First, we're going to create a new prefab. This new prefab is exactly like the old building prefab, except we use the upgradable building script instead of the building script. To create this, I simply duplicated the existing prefab, removed the building script, and added the new upgradable building script. The view for the building at this stage stays the same. Once we have this prefab created, we finally need to update the managers. First, in the building manager, we associate the new prefab. Instead of using the building prefab, we'll use the upgradable building prefab. The second thing we want to do is refer to our new building data files. We've called them upgradable building data.xml. In the activity manager, we want to do the same thing. Change the activity data to refer to the new activity data file. Finally, in the persistence manager, we've just changed the name of the saved game. This is so we're not loading different data types that are used for a different game. Once these changes are made, everything is ready. Hit play and the scene will operate as discussed. You can see that this tutorial is also available in the package and includes a Word document. Thank you.